phytoplankton has ecological and economical importance in various spheres. It is well known that phytoplankton is the primary producer in many aquatic systems. Phytoplankton is considered to be a rich source of biofuel, animal feed, human food, and biofertilizers. It is evident that phytoplankton removes carbon more efficient than terrestrial plants and thereby helps in the control of global warming. Similar to phytoplankton, zooplankton serves as primary consumer in aquatic ecosystem as well as secondary producers. Zooplankton can be used as live feed for carnivorous feedfish and shellfish. Zooplankton such as those present in foreign mineral ooze are used as thermal insulators and chromatographic column filters. Marine copepods produce fecal pellets and contribute to the formation of marine snow thereby accelerating the flow of nutrients and minerals from the surface to the bottom of the sea. It is interesting to know that some zooplankton are potential source of bioactive compounds that emit light in the aquatic environment. With more scientific research being carried out of plankton, there could be discoveries about what plankton can do to enhance our lives and our health. It is incredible to consider how the small microorganism can contribute to many distinctive fields and how they could improve people's life in terms of new clinical remedies. In time, plankton may be recognized as one of the most essential organisms that exist on this planet. Phytoplankton are the microscopic drifting organisms found in the surface and subsurface layers of aquatic environments like seas, oceans, lakes, rivers, and ponds. They are pigmented autotrophs initiating the food chain of any aquatic ecosystems and are the primary producers upon which the primary consumers zooplankton depend. The major types of phytoplankton are diatoms, non-flagellates, cyanobacteria, green algae, coccolithophore, and they are popularly known as the grasses of the sea. This chlorophyll containing autotrophs perform photosynthesis using carbon dioxide and water to generate food for themselves while giving out oxygen as a byproduct. It will reduce carbon dioxide in water and allows water to take in more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere and thus help in carbon dioxide sequestration. While part of the synthesized carbon is transferred to the high level of aquatic environments, the rest goes down to the bottom after the phytoplankton death. In this way, phytoplankton help to transfer tens of gigatons of carbon on the deep oceans annually and keep the climate system. On the other hand, Phytoplankton provide immense scope for commercial exploitation through their mass cultivation and conversion of the harvested biomass into value-added products. Zooplankton are small aquatic microorganisms in the water column that include crustaceans, rotifers, open water insect larvae, and aquatic mites. The zooplankton community is composed of both primary consumers which eat free-floating algae and secondary consumers which feed on other zooplankton. The zooplankton community is an important element of the aquatic food chain. These organisms serve as intermediary species in the food chain, transferring energy from planktonic algae as primary producers to the larger invertebrate predators and fish who in turn feed on them. Zooplankton are highly sensitive to changes in aquatic ecosystems. The effect of environmental disturbances can be detected through changes in species composition, abundance, and body size distribution. Information on the kinds of zooplankton that are found in the water and the abundance of certain species relative to one another serve as a measure of biological condition. Zooplankton are good indicators of changes in nutrient pollution over time because they respond quickly to changes in nutrient input to the water body. In short, we need to examine and monitor the plankton because, first, some phytoplankton produce toxins that become concentrated in filter-feeding animals such as oysters, mussels, and even fish. Second, some species of phytoplankton or zooplankton can be indicator species of environmental health, in effect integrating the conditions of the past few days or weeks. Third, the chemical attributes of plankton such as lipids or natural isotopes and even their shape or health can indicate if the eutrophication is natural or human-induced. Compared to phytoplankton, seagrass growth need less nitrogen relative to carbon to manufacture cellulose needed for structural support. Phytoplankton and algae that grows on seagrass requires proportionally more nitrogen as their cells have little structural support. Consequently, seagrass is drifting clear down nutrient waters and cannot compete algae, taking up the sparse nutrients. When humans release nutrients into waterways, phytoplankton are no longer concerned and begin to shed the seagrass and algae begin to grow on the seagrass beds. 
one, sampling location, tab, and frequency have been determined, prepare for field sampling. Label sample containers with sufficient information to avoid confusion or error. On the label, indicate grade, decrease number, sampling station, study area, type of sample, and depth. Use waterproof labels. When possible, enclose collection vessels in a protective container to avoid leakage. If samples are to be preserved immediately after collection, add preservative to container before sampling. Sample size depends on type and number of determinations to be made. The number of replicates depends on statistical design of the study and statistical analysis selected for data interpretation. Always design a study around an objective with a statistical approach rather than fit statistical analysis to data already collected. In the field record book, note sample location, tab, type, time, meteorological condition, turbidity, water temperature, salinity, and other significant observations. Engineers field notebooks with waterproof paper are very suitable. Field data are invaluable when analytical results are interpreted and often have to explain and result change to by the variable character of the aquatic environment. Collect the incident samples for chemical analysis to help define environmental variations having potential effect on plankton. Water sample were carried out using a fountain at the size 20 micrometer. Water samples were collected in a sample bottle 600 ml with a volume of 200 ml with 3 times the water sampling. The water sample is then placed in a cool box that has been given ice cubes. Giving ice cubes is done to maintain the temperature of the water in the sample bottle. Plankton is collected horizontally by slowly towing the net to a constant speed, around 1 to 2 meters per second. And the faster will increase the extent of extrusion, and any slower may increase the incidence of avoidance. Nets may be fit with a flow method to determine the volume of water filter. To then determine the number or biomass of zooplankton per cubic meter. For plankton sampling, you should be concerned with the speed of the water rather than the speed of the seafloor. The group commonly referred to as algae constitutes a large and very diverse assemblage of organisms. Up to 15 different groups or divisions are recognized, depending on the system of classification used. Although, there may be some superficial similarities between these divisions, they can differ greatly from one to another, especially in regards to their pigment arrays and their similar ultrastructure. The evolutionary relationship between many of these divisions are thus obscure. A number of these algal divisions occur predominantly in freshwater and have only a few male representatives, while others are well represented in both the marine and freshwater environment albeit by different genera. Additionally, even though some division may be present in freshwater, they don't form part of the phytoplankton communities, but instead grow attached to a substrate. Example include stoneworts and freshwater species of red algae. Some phytoplankton are extremely small, with cells of less than 1 micrometer in diameter. Even the larger freshwater phytoplankton cells may be only up to 500 micrometer in their maximum dimension. The majority, however, fall within the nanoplankton and microplankton size range, although the abundance, role, and importance of freshwater phytoplankton algae may be often overlooked because of their small size. Some colonial and filamentous phytoplankton species may form aggregation to up 2 mm in diameter and be visible to the naked eye. As well as cyanobacteria, red and purple photosynthetic bacteria also occur in some lakes and ponds. However, there are marked differences between the two. Cyanobacteria have in common with eukaryotic algae the presence of the pigment chlorophyll A, which is used to trap like energy for photosynthesis. The biochemical pathway for photosynthesis in cyanobacteria is exactly the same in the other algae and the higher plants, where carbon dioxide and water are used as the basic ingredient to manufacture carbohydrates and oxygen is liberated in the process. In addition to chlorophyll A, cyanobacteria also possess the accessory like red trapping pigment phycosin and phycoerythrin, which are blue and red colored respectively, and give the cyanobacteria their distinctive blue-green coloration. In contrast, the photosynthetic bacteria possess pigments other than chlorophyll A, are obligate anaerobes, and they don't release oxygen as a result of their photosynthetic processes. Chlorophyceae algae are eukaryotic organisms. The planktonic species can be present as single-cell species, as colonial species, and as filamentous species. 
Many of the colonial spaces have a set number of cells per colony, with 4, 8, 16, 32, or 64 cells being present. Chlorophyceae cells typically have a single nucleus and a large chloroplast in relation to the cell size. The chloroplast can display a great variety of shapes among different genera and may also contain pyranoids, which are associated with starch storage. Green algae contain both chlorophylls A and B, as well as carotene and xanthophyll accessory pigments. The protoplast usually fills the entire cell, but some species possess large centraqueous vacuoles. The cell walls are generally but not always composed of cellulose, which is surrounded by a layer of mucilage. All other orders have non motel vegetative cells, but many still have a flagellated motel stage during their life cycle, either as gametes or as juice spores. Many of the non-flagellated planktonic forms have flattened colonial forms or flattened cells with spines and other protuberances that optimize the cell or colony surface area to volume ratio, increasing their friction against the surrounding water medium and thus reducing their sinking rates. By this means, they remain within the circulating surface waters where they can obtain light for photosynthesis. Diatoms are widely distributed in both freshwater and marine habitats. There are many planktonic species but also many benthic and epiphytic species as well. Many planktonic species of diatoms occur as single cells or as colonies, although some are filamentous. The most marked distinguishing feature of diatoms is their cell wall, which is composed of silica. These siliceous cell walls are composed of two overlapping halves, known as valves. One valve, the hypovalve, is smaller than the epivalve, so that it fits inside the larger valve. The two valves are joined together by a girdle band that runs around the center of the cell. When viewed under a microscope, cells from the same species may look entirely different, depending on the orientation of the cell, and whether it is seen in valve view or girdle view. There are two main forms of diatoms, centric diatoms and pennate diatoms. Brine shrimp or artemia is an excellent life feed for aquaculture. It lives in saline lakes, lagoons, and man-made solar southerns. It takes 15 days for the newborn larva to grow to adult size. Artemia is a primitive arthropod with a segmented body to which are attached broad leaf-like appendages named thracopods. Their length is approximately from 8 to 10 mm for the adult male and 10 to 12 mm for the female. The body is divided into head, thorax, and abdomen. The head consists of one prostomial and five metameric segments which bear in order the median and compound eyes and labrum, first antenna, second antenna, mandibles, first maxilla or maxillulae, and second maxilla or maxillulae. The thorax is constructed of 11 segments. It's provided with a pair of thoracopods, while the abdomen is composed of egg segments. The anterior to abdominal segments are often referred to as the genital segments and of these the first bears the gonopods, either the brood pouch of the female or the paid pants of the male. Abdominal segments do until seven leg appendages. The final abdominal segment possesses the sarcopods, also called the furca or telson. The entire body is covered with a thin, flexible exoskeleton of chitin to which muscles are attached internally.